In August of 2023, Wacom announced a new line of Wacom One drawing tablets. To get right to the point, I have discovered that they have some issues with how they handle pressure. These pressure issues may seriously affect your drawing experience. So, before you purchase one of these new Wacom One drawing tablets, I want you to understand three things. What these pressure issues are, which combinations of tablets and pens have the problem, and what you can do to mitigate the problem. These tablets were released just a few weeks ago, so I believe this issue with the pressure is a developing situation. I hope that soon Wacom will address the issue through a future firmware update or a driver update. Let's start with what Wacom announced back in August. Previously, Wacom had five consumer level drawing tablets. For the purposes of this video, I'm excluding the one by Wacom tablets because Wacom did not make any announcement about it back in August. So the remaining five tablets are the Wacom One pen display and the four models of the Wacom Intuos pen tablets. In August, they announced four new tablets, two pen displays and two pen tablets. The pen displays are the Wacom 112 and the Wacom 113 Touch, and the pen tablets are the Wacom 1S and the Wacom 1M. The model numbers indicate that these new tablets are really just evolutions of the old tablets. Wacom seems to be adopting the brand Wacom One to describe all their new consumer drawing tablets. But the problem is that now the phrase Wacom One might refer to any one of five different drawing tablets, one old tablet and four new tablets. So to keep it simple, I will use the phrase Gen 1 for the old tablets and Gen 2 for the new tablets. The situation with the pens has also evolved. The Intuos tablets use the Wacom 4K pen and the Wacom One Gen 1 use the Wacom One pen. Now I will call that the Wacom One Gen 1 pen. The four new tablets all share a new Wacom One pen. I will call this the Wacom One Gen 2 pen. I mentioned there were problems, and there are two of them. Problem number one is that the Gen 2 pens struggle with low pressure. Problem number two is that the new tablets, especially the pen tablets, struggle with pressure transitions. Let's begin by looking at the low pressure issues with the pens. For my research on drawing tablets, I use Krita as a standard testing application. For this testing, I used the Krita brush called Ink3 G-Pen, and I made a few modifications. I set the spacing to 0.80. By default, the pressure curve has this sigmoid shape. Sigmoid is a fancy way of saying it has the shape of the letter S. So for the pressure curve, I changed it from the sigmoid shape to a linear shape. This linear pressure curve will help show the low pressure problem. I disabled the strength setting because I wanted to minimize the number of variables that are affecting the size of the stroke. I used a brush size of 100 pixels and I set the brush smoothing in the application to none. Now let us develop some baseline expectation about how pen strokes should look when we are drawing with low pressure. To do this, I drew a series of squiggly lines on my tablets with extremely low pressure. The strokes on the Intuos Pro Large are exactly what I would expect for low pressure. They're still smooth, and you can see how tiny the strokes get at extremely low pressure. There are three sets of squiggles for the Intuos Pro Large because I have three Wacom Pro Pen 2 models. I ranked these squiggles from the Intuos Pro Large as great. They really demonstrate the quality of this tablet and the pen. With the Wacom Intuos, I am using the 4K pen. These squiggles don't look quite as good, but I would say for a consumer tablet, these squiggles are okay. With the Wacom One Gen 1 tablet using the Gen 1 pen, the squiggles also look okay. Well, the S Pen seems to have its own style, so I will rank it as okay-ish. I'm not saying it's a good or bad pen. Samsung seems to have designed it to work this way, and some people may prefer the way it responds to pressure. Now that we have developed that baseline, let's examine what happens with the Gen 2 tablets. In this case, I'll be testing five different pens the Gen 1 pen, the Samsung S Pen, and I have three of the Gen 2 pens. I've labeled them A, B, and C with some gaffer tape. First, let's take a look at the Wacom 112, a Gen 2 tablet. The results for the Gen 1 pen aren't bad. 
but I also don't think they look as good as what I saw with the Gen 1 tablet. With the new tablet, the stroke seems to cut out more. The strokes don't look as good. I've marked these squiggles as having some issues. With the Samsung S Pen, also these squiggles seem to have some issues. The strokes don't look as good as with the Gen 1 tablet. I thought the results from the three Gen 2 pens were all bad. The thing I notice here is that the Gen 2 pens just do not deliver the very fine details with light pressure. All the strokes are thicker than they should be. Now let's take a look at the Wacom 113 Touch, another Gen 2 tablet. The Gen 1 pen seems okay. The Samsung S Pen seems okay. At least it's consistent with how the S Pen seems to behave overall. With the Gen 2 pens, we see a lot of variation in the results. Pen A seems okay, Pen B seems horrible, and Pen C seems to have some issues. Now let's take a look at the Wacom 1M, another Gen 2 tablet. First, all the strokes really look bad. With this tablet, the Gen 1 pen has some very unattractive strokes, and I am having a lot of difficulty getting those thin, fine lines in the stroke. The Samsung S Pen also struggles with those strokes. The lines are too thick and all of the Gen 2 pens look absolutely terrible. The fine details are completely gone in each case. Let's try these pens with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Now, keep in mind that the S8 Ultra in general seems to produce much thinner lines and I think this is a deliberate design decision by Samsung. The Gen 1 pen looks okay here and the Samsung S Pen looks okay here. But take a look at the Gen 2 pens. They all have a problem. I am not able to get those fine lines. Here is a table summarizing my results. I have also added the results of Tablet Expert Cube and his evaluation of the Wacom 1S Pen Tablet with the Gen 2 Pen. Two things really stand out here. First, in general, the Gen 1 Pen seems to do better than any of the Gen 2 Pens. Second, the Gen 2 pen tablets, the Wacom 1M and the Wacom 1S, they seem to really struggle with low pressure. So what is going on with that low pressure? I did a little bit of research with the Wacom 1M. I used a dev build of Open Tablet Driver that was provided by Cube. This dev build is compatible with the Gen 2 pen tablets. And I tested the Gen 1 pen and all three of the Gen 2 pens with that tablet. Using the dev build of Open Tablet Driver that Cube provided, I recorded the reports coming from the tablet. And for each tablet, I recorded around 50,000 reports. And then I excluded the reports that had a pressure of zero. Keep in mind, I am drawing with extremely light pressure. Now let's take a look at the data, which is frequency distributions of the pressure values for each pen. The Gen 1 pen reports lots of pressure values in the lowest part of the pressure range between values of 1 and 200. The Gen 2 pens all seem to struggle with reporting pressure values in that region. You can see it especially with pen A and pen B. They don't report many pressure values between 1 and 200. Pen C is a little bit better, but still, all three of the Gen 2 pens do not match how the Gen 1 pen responds to low pressure. And now it makes sense why I was seeing thicker lines with low pressure. Because if these pens are providing pressure values that are higher on average, and the brush size depends on the pressure, then that means that the brush strokes will be thicker than we expect when the pressure is low. What is the ultimate cause of this low pressure problem with the Gen 2 pens? I don't really know. It could be a fault on the pressure sensor. It is very unclear, but I am certain this is something that is going on with the pens themselves. Fortunately, we can mitigate this problem the simplest thing to do is to modify which pressure curve you're using. Brushes that are using a linear pressure curve will tend to show these effects of low pressure much more. But if you use a sigmoid pressure curve, then you can avoid some of this effect. Here's an example of the Wacom 113 Touch. I tried both the Gen 1 pen and the Gen 2 pen with both linear and sigmoid pressure curves. On the far right, you can see this was successful. With the sigmoid pressure curve, the beginning of the stroke with very low pressure is very thin, so that's great. I tried the same thing with the Wacom 1M. And you can see with the sigmoid pressure curve, things did improve a little bit. Unfortunately, still the stroke looks a bit off. 
but I am sure if I customized that pressure curve a little bit more, I could get what I wanted. If you are looking closely at the strokes with the Wacom 1M, you may also notice that they look a little bit worse in general. They are not quite as smooth. We will address that in the next section. The second problem I encountered was that the tablets struggle with the transition of pressure. This means as the pressure changes from light to heavy and back. For this testing, I used the same Ink 3G pen as I did before, but this time I left the default pressure curve unchanged. So I used the default sigmoid shaped pressure curve. I did not change it to the linear pressure curve. Let's start again by developing a sense of baseline expectations. How should strokes look as we move from low to high pressure and back? The strokes from the Intuos Pro Large look great. The Wacom 1 Gen 1 with the Gen 1 pen looks acceptable. It's not as good as the Intuos Pro, but it is totally fine for a consumer pen tablet. So I think it's okay. The Wacom Intuos M with the 4K pen also looks okay, but I do think it is probably the worst of the three. Now we will take a look at the Gen 2 tablets using the Gen 1 pen. The Wacom 113 Touch looks okay with the Gen 1 pen. The Wacom 112 with the Gen 1 pen also looks okay. The Wacom 1M with the Gen 1 pen looks very bad. Let's dive into that. The first thing I notice is that there are some abrupt, sudden changes in the stroke width. It looks like the pressure is jumping in a weird way. I also noticed a kind of pulsing in the stroke, where you can see there the segments in the stroke as I draw. It's very unattractive, and this stroke looks terrible. Now I will try the Wacom 113 Touch with my Gen 2 pens. Pen A looks okay, pen B looks okay, and pen C looks to me okay-ish. I feel that I see a little bit of roughness in the strokes. Maybe I detect a little bit of problems with the pressure transition. Now let's take a look at the Wacom 112 with the Gen 2 pens. Pen A looks okay-ish. I feel like the stroke is a little bit worse than with the Wacom 113 Touch. Pen B is also, I think, okay-ish. And pen C, again, I will rank as okay-ish. All of these, to me, show some roughness in the stroke that I was not experiencing with the Wacom 113 Touch using the Gen 1 pen. Now let's try the Wacom 1M with the Gen 2 pens. Well, the results are just horrible. You can see the abrupt changes in pressure, and you can see those pulsing segments in the stroke. Here is a table summarizing these results. And I added the testing done by Cube with his Gen 2 pen using the Wacom 1S. The story here is straightforward. The Wacom 1S and the Wacom 1M have real problems with pressure transitions. What causes these pressure transition problems? I just don't know. Our current thinking is that it has to deal with the tablets themselves. They are doing something odd with the pressure and they are doing it for both the Gen 1 pen and the Gen 2 pen. But we can mitigate this problem by using some brush smoothing options in Krita. Krita has four brush smoothing options, but the ones that are relevant in this discussion are none, basic, and weighted. You should be aware that weighted smoothing has two parameters of interest in this discussion, distance and pressure smoothing. I'm mentioning these parameters now because they're going to come up in a minute. Here are the results of drawing strokes with different smoothing options. Of course, setting the brush smoothing option to none gives a very bad stroke. Basic smoothing didn't help at all. Weighted smoothing with a distance of 150 and with no pressure smoothing enabled still resulted in a bad stroke, but it does look a little bit better. Weighted with a distance of 1000, which is the maximum value, and with no pressure smoothing also resulted in a bad stroke, but it did look a little bit better than with no smoothing. Where I saw a real improvement was with the weighted smoothing with a distance of 150, but with pressure smoothing enabled. This produced a very nice, satisfactory stroke, so I ranked that one as okay. So it looks like the key thing you can do to address this problem is to enable pressure smoothing in your applications. We discovered two problems and we identified two mitigations. Let's dive a little bit deeper into those mitigations, the issues around them, and the trade-offs we're going to have to make. 
for the problems that the Gen 2 pens are having with low pressure, the mitigation was to modify the pressure curve. What we want is a pressure curve that flattens out the lower part of the pressure response. In other words, it cuts out that low part of the physical pressure range. The downside of this approach is that your pen will feel less sensitive at low pressure, and it also means you have reduced the overall pressure range of the pen. Taking a look at the diagrams on the right, you can see that a typical pressure curve, here I am showing a linear pressure curve, these typical pressure curves will account for the entire pressure range. So naturally, it accounts for the low end of pressure as well. But the low end is where these Gen 2 pens are having problems. So the solution is to shift the pressure curve enough to the right so that you avoid that low pressure region. You can still use a linear pressure curve if you want, that will certainly work. Or you can use a sigmoid pressure curve. Or really, you can use any kind of curve as long as it flattens out or skips that region. One complication to this method is it may not always be possible to edit the pressure curve in the way you need. Not all drivers or applications necessarily give the user so much control over the pressure curve. The second problem was the pressure transition issues with the Gen 2 tablets. The mitigation here was to enable pressure smoothing in your application. Pressure smoothing works very similarly to position smoothing. It just takes away some of the jerkiness of the pressure numbers so that you should see the pressure smoothly go up and down as you press harder and softer. But there are a couple of complications here. Not all applications perform pressure smoothing, and certainly some apps do not give you control over the pressure smoothing in a way that you might need. If you do enable pressure smoothing, there are some trade-offs. Pressure smoothing, just like position smoothing, will introduce a kind of lag. In this case, we can call it pressure lag. This means that if you suddenly press harder or softer with the pen, it will take a little bit longer for the stroke to respond. Another trade-off is that in some applications, pressure smoothing and position smoothing are linked. In other words, you can't have pressure smoothing without position smoothing. And this means that you're not only going to have pressure lag, but also brush lag. Also, no manufacturer has a driver that gives you control over pressure smoothing. So this is something you're going to have to do in an application, or if you want to do it in the driver, you'll have to use open tablet driver. So knowing what we know, what should we do now? At this point, I recommend that you hold off on getting any new Wacom One tablets or the new pen. I hope that soon Wacom will have a firmware or a driver update, which will address these issues with pressure. I was able to find a couple of mitigations for these problems using either a pressure curve or different pressure smoothing. So in theory, Wacom should be able to give an update that addresses these issues. As the situation evolves, I will learn more and I will make another video to provide an update. But until then, again, I think you should hold off on getting these tablets. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video.